In this lesson, we'll learn how to draw the Haworth structures for sugars. The question reads, D mannose, a carbohydrate found in immunoglobulins, has the following Fischer projection. In question A, they want us to draw the Haworth structure for the beta D mannose. Now, just to be clear, we've already learned what D and L signify when they're in front of a sugar name. They tell us the type of stereoisomer it is. But we haven't learned about alpha and beta. That is to be discussed after we draw the Haworth structure. Now, take a look at the Fisher projection model for mannose. We are told that it's D mannose, and the reason why it's a D stereoisomer is because this chiral carbon that's furthest away from the top of the molecule has its hydroxyl or OH written to the right of the carbon, which suggests it's a D stereoisomer. When it comes to drawing the Haworth structure, you want to start by turning this molecule 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll redraw this where I have C double bonded to oxygen and hydrogen, and the rest of the molecule should look like this. The next step is to fold the horizontal carbon chain into a hexagon. And we want to start from the left side. But just before we do that, let's label these carbons for clarity. So this is C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. As I mentioned, this will form into a hexagon, which is a six-sided shape. And each of these carbons will occupy one of these vertices, except for this one. We'll discuss that in a moment. So this will be C1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the sixth carbon is bonded to this one, CH2OH. This one is occupied by oxygen. So oxygen will form a bond or connect this carbon to that carbon. So using this, I can say that we have C double bonded to O and H. And what's interesting about this nomenclature where we have alpha and beta, it's what determines the positioning of these atoms. So let's continue this. We have hydrogen going down and OH. Again, OH up, hydrogen down. Carbon four, OH down, hydrogen up. And since we have carbon, bonded to CH2OH, and this oxygen connecting these two carbons, that's what accounts for this oxygen. So we still have a hydrogen facing downwards, and for this to work, this double bond with this oxygen no longer will exist. By removing that double bond, we now have one, two, three, four, four bonds around this carbon. This oxygen is satisfied, and this extra Hydrogen will form a bond with this oxygen. Now, as I mentioned, the beta and alpha tell us the positioning of these atoms. In fact, when you have a beta enamer, the OH is at the top. So we should have OH here and hydrogen down there. For question B, they want the alpha enamer. So in that case, the OH is down here and the hydrogen is up here. And there you have it. That is how to draw a Howarth structure for sugars.